everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 109. I'm going to talk about Masters of Commerce today. Now, this is a game that is not very well known. It's by a company called Grouper Games out of Utah. And I believe this is the designer as well as the company's first game. Now, I do know that Asthma Day, I think it's Asthma Day, has picked this up for release in Europe. So, I think they're changing the art a little bit. Uh, so, but. Uh, this is the American release, and this game plays, it says, 3 to 11 players in about 30 to 45 minutes, which is probably right. It's, pro it's probably on the long end of that, you know, especially the more players that you add. Uh, so this is a really interesting game. It's kind of like a party game, but it's sort of an economic kind of euro -y game. I think people that like Euro games would like it. Uh, not everybody's going to like it. I happen to enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, now, the group that I played it with, they're kind of split down the middle. I think more people like it than don't. Uh, you've got to be open to sort of a loud environment, uh, you know, sort of uh, yelling maybe, <laughs> depending on who's in the group. Uh, let me talk about the, uh, the game mechanics. I'll show you a little walkthrough of it, and then I'll come back and tell you more about it. Okay, so here's everything that you get with the game. You get some paper money. It's nice and big, so it's not too bad. Um, you get these stacks of these properties here. Now there's properties of all these different colors, uh, green, blue, red, and you've got a market here that shows you the current sort of output or income generated by the different properties. So at the start of the game, they all start in the middle. They all start at 30, 30 bucks, 30,000 bucks. Uh, this one here, this little tiddlywink should be yellow. I just got two greens instead of a yellow and a green. Uh, so as the rounds change, these will be moving up and down. And the properties will become, you know, worth more or less. Now, if you see the blue property here, the lowest it can ever get is twenty bucks. The highest it can ever get is forty. Whereas the red, the lowest it can get is actually negative, which means you have to pay money back to the bank. The highest red can get is seventy. Now, during the ground, uh, you're going to roll these dice here, and that's going to change the value of the property. So, let me just show you a little bit about that. So the red die here has a plus seven, also has a minus seven, and it's got plus or minus two and three on here as well. So this is really going to swing quite a bit. If it's here, the chances of it going here, here, or even down here, here, here are pretty great, you know. But if you look at these blue ones here, you've got zero, plus one, and minus one on all the six sides here, two of each. So it's only going to go up or down one or probably stay the same, and it's not going to change very much when it does move. So in between these are sort of variations on that. So red is the most volatile, whereas blue is the most stable. So that's how the market works and sort of this property income thing works. Now, there are two types of players. One is landlords, and the landlords are going to get these properties like so. They're going to be dealt uh, three each at the beginning of the game, randomly off the deck. And then there are the merchants. And the merchants are going to get these little bags here, and these are pretty cool. And you're going to get these little uh, discs here. So take a look at the discs, and you're going to have a symbol. So I sell apples, or iPods, whatever you please. This other guy is going to get this bag. He's going to look at it, and he sells boots. Okay? And so you've got a closed side and a uh, regular side. So the merchants are going to get these in some icon of their particular color or whatever. And the landlords will get a stack of three of these, and these will be face up. So there's going to be two winners in the game. There's going to be a landlord winner, and there's going to be a merchant winner. Whoever has the most money at the end of the game wins, and there's no competition between the greatest. It's just there's always two winners, which is cool. I really like that. So what's going to happen is a landlord may have some of these properties phase up in front of them. And then the merchants are vying to pay rent and use that property. So the game also comes with, I should say, this cool insert here, which all this stuff has. Yeah. And then you got these markers. So each landlord is going to get a marker. And then we've got a timer. So this is all real time. And normally I'm not a huge fan of real time. I don't like it. But in this game, it is perfect. So this is a two minute timer. And the very first thing you're going to do each round is you're going to flip over this timer. Okay, go. And then everybody's going to start shouting and trying to get into these properties and also rent these properties. So let's say a landlord here has these three properties. This Apple guy says, you know what? I'm going to pay you 20 bucks, and the guy that owns the property says, okay, 20 bucks. And then the boot guy comes in and says, you know what, I'm going to give you 25 bucks. He says, okay, screw you, you're out of here. I'm going to throw away your chip, put the boot on there, I'm going to do 25 bucks. 
And so if there's like four landlords and four merchants, all this is going on across the table, everybody's screaming and shouting. But then at one point, the landlord and the merchant that are currently on there says, okay, let's lock this up, let's you know get rid of that. So if we flip that to close, we agree, we flip the close, and this is locked out. It can't be negotiated for the rest of the round. So once all of the properties are closed or this timer runs out, then that's immediately frozen. So to validate and, and make it official, you've got to have your chip on there with the you know amount written on there. Now after that happens, after we've negotiated here, then we're gonna roll these dies here. So we're gonna roll a die, there's plus seven, good for red. That's a roll the yellow. This is kind of hard to read actually, so it's minus three. Ooh, so if you're on yellow, you're hurting bad. Uh, green one, let's see, minus one, that's not so good. And then blue gets a minus one, which isn't too, too bad. Okay, so now this is the worth of all these properties. Anybody that's on a red property is living pretty. Anybody that's on yellow and stuff is not doing so good. So let's say I was on these properties. I was the Apple guy. I was on these properties. So I'm on two red properties here. So that means I'm going to get 70 times two. For each property that you're on of that color, you're going to get that much from the bank. So I'm going to get 140 grand. Nice. Green, let's say I'm on this one. This one actually pays out twice. So it's on 20, so I would get 40 bucks for that property. And you're just going to go around. Everybody's going to get the payout amount. After you pay everybody their money, all the merchants their money, then, depending on whatever the rent was, so this rent might be a little higher, maybe you charge 50 bucks for it. And then these two were 10, you were trying to get rid of these because they're too volatile. Nobody wanted, you know, to get on that for fear of having to actually lose money there. So I'm going to pay this guy, let's say, I'll, these are all the properties I was on. I'm going to pay 50 to whoever this guy was, and then 10 and 10 to whoever these people were. So I'm going to pay out 70, and I got in 140 times 2, so what, 180 total. So I made out pretty good as a... Uh, a merchant there. So now the landlords are all going to have to pay 10 grand into the bank for each property that they own. Once they've done that, then we're going to flip over a certain number of these tiles here, okay, based on the number of players. Now here's an issue I have with the game. It tells you that you auction off X number of tiles. So let's say we auction off uh, seven tiles or whatever. It doesn't tell you how to auction it off at all. So they, don't, they don't know if it's an open auction, if it's a once around, if it's, you know, you write down on a piece of paper or whatever. And they also don't tell you how you reveal the cards. So they tell you how many, and then they don't say if you do it one at a time, auction this, then you reveal the next one, or if you reveal them all, and then you auction them off. It does say you auction them off one at a time, but it doesn't tell you how you reveal. So um, we've played it where you reveal them one at a time, but there's a thread on the forums, and you know, thinking about it, this is just a guess, I think you could do it either way, is you could reveal them all and then auction them down the line so that people know some of these multipliers are going to come up because they know they can get more rent out of these probably um, and stuff like that. That seems might maybe better, but that's just a guess. It's not a huge problem with the rules, but I wish it was more clear, you know. But, you know, maybe they leave it open so you can do whatever you want. So after you do that, after you auction off these to the landlords, then you're going to restart the round. Now you play five rounds. You can see one, two, three, four, five in the years. And then you start the next round. You open negotiations. Anything that um, was closed will be flipped back open. Everything will stay on there, but you can renegotiate um, you know, these things. You can ask more because maybe red's up high now. And so you, know, you try to get some more money out of the properties that you have. And you're going to have more properties in front of you as well. Now, there is a special part of the game here, and these are these liens here. I'll save this for last. So if any time, if you're a merchant and you choose not to pay rent, or you cannot pay rent because you're broke, then that landlord can give you a lien marker. And this lien marker will stay in front of you. And on a future round, that landlord can take your income from a property. They can choose to take an income. So they would probably just take you know, whatever the largest income was for that turn. And then if for some reason you get a second lien put on you, then you are removed from the game. Now, most people, when we played this, are pretty, you know, judicious with their money, and this hasn't been a big issue, because nobody wants to have money taken from them. But the problem with the rules is there's a few sort of discrepancies around this. Now, if you're going into the last round, and you've already received your income, and then you go to pay rent, and you don't have any liens in front of you, so you can take a sort of a free lien against you and not pay rent to whoever you owe the most rent to, then you get that and you kind of jip the landlord out of their rent for that round. So to me, that seems to sort of break the spirit of the game. 
So what we did is we actually house ruled on the spot in the first game that we played of this. And we said, no, you cannot choose to take a lien in the final round of the game. You just can't do that. Because there's no way for the landlord to come and take your income on a following round. So it's not really fair. So in the last round we played, you can't put a lien, uh, you know, take a lien on purpose. The other issue I have with this is it says, uh, there's a little note on the side that says, uh, merchant can use creative negotiation to get out of a lien. So I don't know what that means. I mean, can you pay the guy off? But, you know, that doesn't make sense um, because if you're not paying rent anyway, then what are you paying? Maybe you can pay half and they say, okay, I won't give you the lien if you can pay half. So it leaves it open. This is not a deal breaker for me, though. Now, that last round business is a bit of a deal breaker, I'll be honest with you. Because I don't think that's very well the spirit of the game. Now, maybe that's part of the game. Everybody, so all the merchants that don't have liens on them can stiff a landlord. Uh, you know, and so maybe that becomes part of the metagame. I don't know, but it's not very clear in the rule book at all. I think I prefer my house rule of you can't, you know, uh, get a do get the free lien at the end of the game. Okay, hope you enjoyed the overview. Uh, this is actually a very, very fun game. Uh, it's kind of raucous. It's kind of boisterous. It's a game that's meant to be played in a fun way, uh, sort of a theme lately with me. Uh, so I do have a problem with those rules, though. I wish they would clarify that. I've asked on Board Game Geek and things like that, uh, and they haven't responded. Uh, so I haven't tried to email on the guy directly. But all that being put aside, I would be interesting to come up with the optimal solutions for this as far as how to actually do the auctions and how those lien markers actually should work. Uh, because it's on the cusp of being a really, really, really good game, really fun. Uh, game, uh, but you know those things kind of hold it back with the rules. Uh, I'm still going to do this review of it because I really enjoy it even with those flaws. Uh, one thing that's really cool is the whole swing of the properties. So you can kind of try to gamble and get those red properties to swing up for you, but you're really rolling the dice, so to speak, with that. And you see people a lot, but the funny thing is, is that you see people fight over the stable properties because that's guaranteed income. So. It's interesting. The whole thing is really very interesting in the sort of meta game, and then you leave it up to the chance, which people are going to have a problem with. But I don't know. I would. It's difficult to say because you can really get hosed. Uh, you know, one of the games I played, I got kind of muscled out of some of those uh, blue and green properties, and you know, I said, okay, I'm going to go balls out for the um, the red property, and you know, I got I got jacked. They rolled all the way down to negative, and that was it. So. You know, but I still had fun with it. It's still a fun game. So uh, this is a game I think you can play with non-gamers especially too. So I recommend this game. Even with the rules issues, uh, I think it's, it's going to be, you can kind of come up with some rules issues. Maybe hopefully there'll be some more discussion as this game becomes well known. And I would say take this to, you know, your non-gamer where you're going to have like a party game atmosphere. You're going to play something like Apples to Apples or some other garbage. Um, and this will fill in nicely and bring those people in. And it should be very, very fun. As long as everybody has a really good attitude about it. So, anyway, I recommend it. Thanks.